All right, so today I am servicing a Red Sea Peninsula style tank. Uh, we took this tank from another company about a year back. Uh, so let's take a look. So we got some rose bubble tip anemones, and you can see you got a little clownfish in there that is being hosted. But this started off as just one uh, bubble tip anemone, and it's just taken off, and it's a bit of a worry because you can see it's starting to spread and we want to have room for corals in here so we're going to have to start taking some of that uh, some of the anemone out but right now that clownfish is loving life in that anemone and it, it really does look beautiful it is really nice we got a little bit of uh, algae on the bottom here which I'll go ahead and do a gravel vac got plate coral right here looking really healthy Beautiful uh, platygyra coral that looks like it's starting to encrust on the rock right over here. That color is really nice. It's like a nice teal green. Um, doesn't show up so much on camera, but it's a, it's a really nice coral. Got a little frag of a blasto. And this is the coral we started with, uh, Mohawk zoanthid. And this thing's just kind of been taken over. You see it's up here too. This was kind of the tester coral. Uh, I'm going to start fragging some of it out of here and make room for some other stuff. You can see we got some other uh, zoas right there. Those are really nice with the green with the red skirt. Torch coral is doing decent, but it's getting awfully close to that rose bubble tip anemone, so we're gonna have to definitely figure that out. Uh, but one of the things I wanted to point out to um, you guys, uh, for those that don't know, when you do get a scully, you know, it's, it's and I did this too at the beginning, uh, you know, you tend to put the scullies on the substrate, but we've noticed that they do much better when you put them on the rocks. Uh, you can see how healthy and fat this guy is up here. And then if you look at the scully, the green one in the back, I mean, he's massive. And I have to, I do have to get some rid of some of that uh, mohawks that are going around him, but he's massive. They don't get that big on the sand a lot of times because sand finds its way into the coral, into the scully's mouth and can really irritate it. And we've had them, we've seen them die before. And that sand provides a lot of irritation to the scully, especially if you have a sand sifting fish in the tank that likes to drop uh, sand on the scully. Uh, but there's always snails, there's always some type of critter, or there's always, you know, whether it be a wave maker or something that blows sand around and it eventually gets on the scully and that ends up really irritating them. And they, they just do so much better when you put them up and elevated and away from the sand bed. Then we have a A can over here, which is looking really, really healthy. Really pretty bright green and little purple stripes in there. A cabbage coral doing well, got a blue mushroom there, which is a, another nice coral, but the lights are really blue, so it's hard to really see him stand out unless uh, when, when the whites come on, he looks a lot better. Then we got a hammer coral, which again, it's pretty much that anemone is touching it, and we're gonna have to figure that out because we're gonna have to move him away because he's getting way too close. But it's, it's healthy for the most part. It puts out sweeper tentacles every once in a while. But uh, it's healthy, you can tell by the skeletal base, it's bright white, there's new tissue growth. So it's doing really, really well, but we have to be preemptive and get him away from that bubble tip anemone. From this side, you really can appreciate how just massive and how many colonies of bubble tip anemones uh, are in this tank. These are several colonies. And then we have some pallies down here, beautiful coral, love the color, bright, um, hardy coral. So today I'm going to put another hammer coral down below, away from the bubble tip anemones. Add some more uh, color in this tank. We do have a lot of green. I like to get some other colors in here. I think we've maxed out with the green. And they're only running two of the Hydra 32 lights. Uh, we had a third one. Um, there was a malfunction with it. We're you know, gonna get a, a third one back, but right now it's been running off the two and it's, everything seems to be doing pretty well. Keep in mind, these are all lower light corals, so that's, it's, it's working out. And then we have our refugium and your classic Red Sea uh, filtration setup. And they do have an apex system, so everything is run through the apex. We're able to monitor uh, everything we need to monitor through that. This, this tank is relatively no low nutrient. Uh, you can see the, uh, the refugium, there's not too much macroalgae in there. We've got a Kessel Refugium light. We'll have to add a couple more. We'll have to add some more macroalgae in there to get that thing kick-started, and hopefully it will help uh, with some of this uh, 
hair algae. It looks like brown in the, in the, in the sand, that's because the blue lights are on, uh, but it is hair algae. I just wanted to share that uh, with you, this tank we've been doing for about, uh, I think a little over a year now. It's, uh, it was in very bad shape when we first started. It's doing really, really well now. The coralline algae is insane on this tank. I mean, you can just tell by the, the pump right there, there's coralline algae all through there. The rocks are really nice purple. Um, it's, it's very, very healthy. It's doing really well. So now one of the other things that might stand out is you only see this clownfish in here and there's two chromis swimming around in here uh, somewhere else. Now they, they did have a lot more fish in this tank. Unfortunately, um, they've been dealing with a bout of marine velvet and it wiped out all the larger, um, scaleless, less uh, tolerant fish in the tank, uh, which is unfortunate, but kind of the risk we take. So we're in a position now where we have to take out these fish and let the tank go fallow for about 80 to 90 days to make sure that the parasite will die. Because as long as there's fish in here, that parasite, although those fish are asymptomatic, that parasite is still living in their, in their gills, in their eyes, it's still in there. It's able to survive and, and, and reproduce. And if you put a new fish in here, if that fish immune system isn't strong, it's going to immediately attack that new fish and kill it. So it's very important to take all the fish out of here and give that parasite nothing to feed on and eventually it'll get wiped out in about 80 to 90 days. Um, having the coral and the inverts in here is not going to affect uh, anything. They'll be fine. The disease cannot live on them. It does not replicate on them. It does not feed on them. So as long as we take the fish out, uh, we'll be fine. We'll leave them fallow. And instead of them buying fish from now on from a third party uh, store, we now have our own store, our own facility to where we can get fish in and we can QT them for the appropriate amount of time and medicate them appropriately to make sure that any fish going forward that we put in this tank, um, we're confident will be healthy. So that's two things we're doing for the customer. Um, we're very fortunate that we have our own facility to do that. We want this tank to be healthy and happy and thrive and uh, we don't like to see fish mortality. I just wanna show you this tank and what we're dealing with. Uh, hopefully, oh look, there's a firefish too. So another survivor, well, that's cool. So hopefully, uh, I'll give you an update on everything. Next time I show this tank, there'll be a bunch of fish in here and we'll get this thing filled out a bit more because I know the customers definitely want to see some more life in here. And we're going to put some more coral in here as well and trim up some of that bubble tip anatomy. One of the other cool things I wanted to share with you is this customer also has a BioCube tank that is a freshwater planted tank and in here is a green spotted puffer. Now this is a temporary home because as green spotted puffers get bigger, they need salt water. And when he outgrows this tank, we're gonna go ahead and move him over to the reef tank. They are completely reef safe and they're a great fish for uh, reef tanks we found. All right, thank you so much for watching. Have a good one.